So one of my favorite stories of how hard we used to work in Goldman was actually like a really sad weekend work story. I remember waking up really hungover on a Sunday morning because I had gone out the night before. We were in New York, it was super fun. And the reason why I had gone out was because I had assumed that I didn't have a ton of work that weekend. And I remember waking up at like 10 a.m. and my Blackberry is just like going off. Like it's beeping red, my VP's blowing up my phone. And he's like, John, check your email. We just got this note from the client. They need a board deck for this huge M&A deal we're doing, like completely new model, completely new scenarios, all by tonight for tomorrow morning's emergency board meeting. And so I'm like, okay, it is what it is. Like I'm used to working at this point, right, on weekends. But this particular day was bad because I get in, I crank through the model, I crank through the deck by like five or six o'clock. Cause I'm like, I've got dinner at six. I'm gonna make it in time. Like I'm not gonna be flaky with my friends cause it work. And so we sent off to the client. I'm like, done for the day. When we're going to dinner, we're gonna have a good day. We're gonna start the work week tomorrow. Well, I get to dinner. I'm already like 45 minutes late at this point. It's across Manhattan. And <laughs> I sit down, I check my Blackberry. And the note from the client is like, this is not what we're looking for. We need this, this, and this. And the, the deflation that happens in me is I sit down for dinner and I look at my friends and I'm like, guys, I'm so sorry, I need to go. And so I get back to the office and like, I just want you to imagine like the floor I work on. It's like hundreds of desks. It's like a tra Wall Street bullpen trading floor. And just like me, this poor little second year analyst working alone. And so I crank all this stuff out for this new model, this new deck. And I finish like the whole thing and send over to the client. It's like 3.34. It's a Monday morning, keep in mind. And I'm leaving the office in like hungover Sunday clothes. We're talking like gym shorts and a t-shirt and the traders get in in the morning, like really early to start the market open. And I remember walking out of the building through the turnstiles and like tired, hungover looking. And I, I make eye contact with this trader who's like in a full suit, Monday morning slick back hair. And he gives me this look in his eyes. And it was just this sad, he just goes, and it, it, it just hit me. And it was the saddest thing. And it was the saddest moment. I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> So the crazy thing is I didn't actually quit Goldman because I was like working too hard or anything like that. It's actually two things that I didn't expect at the time. So number one, uh, the work just like wasn't that fulfilling, right? It's intellectually interesting, but you don't ever feel like you're making a real impact and you definitely don't feel like you're helping anyone. And then number two, I think is the most important thing. What I didn't realize is that getting a job at Goldman actually open up even better opportunities for me. So what I mean by that is like, once you get a job at Goldman, it opens up so many other doors for you that are actually even better jobs. So for example, you can get in private equity and venture capital, which is what I went into. Um, you're much more likely to go into a great business school, for example, Stanford, which I went to. And so that's why I'm so grateful for having gotten the Goldman job because it was the first time in my life where I just like worked super hard for something and saw all of these doors open in my life. And that's why I'm so passionate about teaching you guys everything that you need to know to actually experience that same level of success, break into those barriers as well, because it's gonna open up so many other doors for you and it's just gonna help you guys crush it. The one thing about me that's still a New Yorker is we love jaywalking, so let's hit it. Don't get run over. Culver City bus is gonna hit us. <laughs> All right, so before we go in an order, there are three things you guys need to absolutely crush your interview process. So number one is actually, how do you cold email and get informational interviews? Especially if you don't know anyone in the industry you've never done it before. Number two is actually like, just like knowing finance, they call it your technicals. It's like understanding the markets, understanding how to financially analyze the company. And then last is how to crush your interviews. So let's get some coffee and I'm gonna walk you guys through all three. All right, so fun fact, I don't really drink coffee and I never once had a coffee my entire time working as an analyst. I would just like only have a tea if I was super tired because you know, you just like run off straight anxiety. Just spring out of bed, you're like, I gotta get to the office. <laughs> All right guys, class is in session. Gonna teach you about networking. 
All right, so first topic is how the heck do you cold email and actually get someone to respond to you? So what's funny about Wall Street recruiting is that in order to even get an official interview, you have to first like network and build rapport with the team that you're actually interviewing at. You have to have like pre-round interviews by getting informational interviews with them. And so this is where it's really important to use LinkedIn as your best friend. Basically, you wanna find some employee there that works in that division that you're applying for and you wanna find some sort of shared connection. So the easiest one for this is like, let's find an alum of your university. So for me, I went to UNC for undergrad. And so specifically in that, I found a lot of UNC alums that worked across Wall Street and I built a shared rapport there. But you can also find different ways to actually get in that are based off of you know personal background or shared experience. So for example, when I was an analyst, I actually had like listed on my LinkedIn that I was an Eagle Scout. And so I had actually multiple Eagle Scouts from completely different universities some smaller universities especially that would reach out to me like, hey, like I'm an Eagle Scout, um, would love to chat with you because of our shared experience. I'm really interested in what you're doing and I'd love to learn more. And so as it relates to like writing a cold email, there are a couple mistakes people make in actually writing their cold email that I really wanna make sure you guys don't make. Number one is like, don't be boring and don't be stiff. Like don't make the mistake of having a subject line that just says informational interview request. Instead, what you really want to do is like build share rapport and have that like professional yet casual and friendly and approachable connection. I remember sending a cold message to someone on LinkedIn being like, they said that they loved basketball and specifically like this team. And I was like, fellow Charlotte Hornets fan reaching out. And so you want to be hyper specific and like, hey, I'm sending this email specifically to you. You want to imply that and also find some sort of shared reason why that person might wanna connect with you. The other thing about it, there are 25 other people that day emailing that person, trying to get an informational interview with them in order to get an actual official interview. And so the secret to building affinity with someone is to find a shared experience and then really show them that like you put in the work to understand who they are and you value their time really genuinely. And so in your email as well, you wanna find that right balance of professionalism, casual friendship building, and then also graciously asking for their time and being really grateful for that. And so find that person and use that shared connection to really see them as a human being and for them to see you as a human being and you'll get in. And that's when you have these 30 minute informational interviews where you start to ask them about like, hey, what's it like working there? What advice do you have? How can I meet more other people in the bank? And specifically what you wanna do once you actually land those informational interviews is you wanna start building genuine relationships with people and they'll actually help introduce you to other people at the bank. And it's so much easier than sending a hundred more cold emails. But the thing I also wanna tell you at the same time is your cold email response rate is still gonna be super low. Think of it as a numbers game, send hundreds, and I promise you will get a couple responses if you're super thoughtful and you do quality as well as quantity in your outreach. So number two is the boring stuff. It's specifically getting to know your technicals. So this is like understanding the markets, understanding finance. Basically, once you get into your interview process, people start grilling you on like, walk me through a discounted cash flow model or like walk me through a balance sheet. And these are just things you just need to understand mechanically. Like what is finance? Like what is profit? What is revenue? All that kind of stuff. Like what drives a business and how do you pitch a stock? All these random questions like this. But the good news is it's really easy to actually prepare all of this stuff ahead of time. So this is my recommendation. There are tons of free guides out there. You can just Google like investment making interview prep. I'm not gonna waste your time. There's other resources out there that'll teach you this boring stuff that you need to learn. But my advice on top of studying every single guide out there, like I would just literally every night spend two hours during college, like prepping with the mergers and acquisitions 400 questions guide. I just know it back to front. But then on top of that, I would just read the Wall Street Journal every single day because what's gonna happen is people aren't gonna be testing for you to like robotically know the definitions of the questions. They're gonna really test for like your genuine understanding of something. And that takes time. That takes you a couple of months of like following the markets every day to see like, what is the Fed doing with interest rates? What M&A deals are out there? And then when the time comes, if you've just like taken in that knowledge every single day and been consistent about it, even within a month's time, you'll be fine and you'll understand the markets really genuinely. So when you're getting grilled by an investment banker, like you'll actually know your core knowledge and your fundamentals and crush the technical part. Because the real part that separates you in terms of actually getting a job at a top tier institution like Goldman isn't knowing the technicals, that's table stakes. What actually separates you out is whether or not people actually genuinely like you and want to work with you. And so that's the last part that I'm gonna go through here is how do you crush your interviews and build great relationships with folks 
they actually give you the offer and they, you pass something called the airport test. All right, so one thing I actually forgot to talk about when we were sitting down at the table is how do you actually crush your resume? So the two tips that I would have for you is one, just Google a list of great action verbs and use those. And then number two is be really quantifiable about your actual concrete impact you've made. So don't just say like, you know, did so-and-so project, say like did so-and-so project and specifically made this impact, like grew top line by X percent or like, don't just say manage a team, like ma I managed a team of 15 to achieve X, Y, and Z. So those are my two main concrete tips. There are tons of videos out there on resume building. What I'll actually do instead is one up everyone else and just give you my resume. So because we're trying to grow the channel and also just get the word out about all the educational tips we want to give out here on this channel that we'll be providing, if you just comment and subscribe, comment and we will DM you and specifically we'll just send you my resume that I used and that like having the actual tool that I used to get in and that template's going to teach you way more about building a great resume than like watching the next 30 minutes on resume template content. So last thing you guys got to crush once you crush your resume is actually crushing your interviews. So the interview process at Goldman is two pronged. So you have your first round interview, which is generally online. And then you have super days, which is like this really scary back to back day where you fly in and you like go through like 15 or 10 or five back to back interviews with bankers of all sorts of seniority. And so I was really lucky in the sense that I actually had two different super days with Goldman. I was interviewing for both their banking division and their sales and trading division. And so I think I'm unfortunately very well qualified to give you guys advice on this because I had way too many reps. So the best piece of advice I actually got from a Goldman banker as I was going through the interview process, he was like, John, stop overthinking things, like just be a human. And that is the best advice that I have for you guys is like, we get so tight and constricted and nervous and anxious about the interview process and you start to be a robot but you have to pass the airport test, which you have to be a human for. And what the airport test is, is when you think about all these bankers who are busy during their day, like running around, what they care about is they actually wanna have an enjoyable conversation with someone. And so they ask themselves subconsciously the test of like, do I actually wanna spend six hours trapped in an airport with this person? And so you have to have the combination of knowing your technicals and fundamentals, being clearly competent for the job with a good work experience. But then on top of that, just be yourself and be a human. And that's how you're gonna crush the interviews. But very tactically speaking, when you think about the interview process, you know, it's the typical questions like, walk me through your story. So you always need to have a really compelling story as to like, why specifically Goldman? Not just like, why specifically invest in banking? Where you're like, oh, I just, you know, I'm interested in finance and the markets. It's like, no, like there was something about my story that really calls me to this job and specifically this company. So to give you guys a specific example of this, to use my story, what I did was I pulled out elements of my childhood of specifically, I have this really fond memory of my mom for the Google IPO actually getting me a single share. And so that memory of having that single share, which obviously skyrocketed over time, was such a fond memory for me, it developed my first love for finance. And that was an organic story that I had about my own experience as to why I wanted to do investment bank because I just saw the power of the market. And so I, I tell that story in a way to build affinity towards why I genuinely was interested in finance and also the markets. And so as I was telling that story, it shows that, hey, like I have a genuine connection with why I want to do this work and why I'm interested in it intellectually. And so the next thing you need to pivot then into is talking about why specifically this firm. So they're going to ask you why Goldman. And this is a really, really important place to actually differentiate yourself. Because if you're interviewing at any top company, if you're just like, oh, it's just the best company. That's not a good enough reason. You have to really do your homework. So one way to talk about this in terms of Goldman is you want to work with the very best people, right? You want to learn from the very best teams. You get energy from that. But also because Goldman is Goldman, that means they get the very best deals. And so something that I really sold really hard was like Goldman works on all the highest profile M&A transactions and highest profile like deals in general. And so you actually get to learn the most complex material as well. And that's what you get excited by and thrive on. And, and it's very genuinely true that that's the case. And so you actually just have fundamentally the best analyst experience there in terms of the complexity and like the interest level of the deals themselves. And so you really wanna to wrap together why specifically investment banking, why you're gonna be good at it, right? Sell the potential. And then why specifically Goldman is the best institution for you. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe so that the YouTube algorithm serves you more of our videos because we're gonna be dropping tons of value like this all the time. This is like literally why I do this job and create content is to share with y'all all the knowledge that I've accumulated over time. 
so you don't have to learn it yourself through painful trial and error. But with that being said, I do actually have to hop in and take a call and start my work day. So I will see you guys later. Peace.